Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about the differences between serial routing and parallel routing within Pro Tools um, in using buses. The first thing we're going to do is create a drum bus. This will be a good point for all of our drums to come together as a submix on a single stereo bus. This gives us one single fader and one insert slot for processing and small adjustments on the entire drum set as a whole. So what we're going to do is start with our kick drum selected and holding the shift key down, select the very bottom room mic, which then selects all the tracks in between those and creates our entire drum set now selected. Okay, underneath that, we're going to go to track new or on a Mac command shift N or control shift N on Windows. And we're going to create one new stereo aux input and hit create. This is down here. Now we're going to double click or we can right click and choose rename. And we're going to call this lowercase b capital drum. Oops. Let's make that lowercase. Okay. I like to keep um, just a personal preference. Um, my tracks I like to name as short as possible. So the lowercase b tells me very quickly by looking at it that this is a serial bus. This is not just a another aux input for effects or something like that. Um, and specifically, this is the drum bus. So I would read this as drum bus, just seeing that lowercase b. Okay, now that we have that track named, then we want to set our input to an unused bus. This is a stereo bus, so we need two. So one and two will work just fine. We want to right click and rename that bus and name it exactly the same thing as the name of the track. This way we know exactly where this bus internally leads to. Then we want to set our outputs to the main mix. Right now mine is still analog one and two and that's fine. We want to solo save this track because once we have our drums playing through it, we don't want to have to turn around and solo individually this bus as well as the tracks that we're soloing. So holding the command key on a Mac or control on Windows and clicking that solo button will gray it out. And then now when everything else or something else gets soloed, essentially everything in the whole session gets muted, but not our solo saved bus. Next, we want to get back up here and select our drums and with our kick drum and our final track down here selected by holding shift, everything is selected. So the option key or alt on Windows is a do to all. Uh, option and shift at the same time is do to selected. So we want to hold option and shift, change the output of our drum tracks, not to our main mix straight to the monitors anymore, but instead we want to send them through our drum bus into this aux input. So we want to send them through our drum bus into our aux input. Now, when we're working on our drums, that signal comes off of this kick track through the drum bus into our aux input on the drum bus and then goes out to analog one and two, which is my main mix output. Okay, now I want to throw a quick uh, compressor on the drum bus for some very light, um, just general punchy kind of um, last touch compression, compression for the entire drum kit. So I'm going to use the 4030 retro compressor here and just do a little four to one with a very slow attack and medium release ish and then just drop the threshold I'm enough
Just enough to get a little bit of punch and overall control on the drum kit for now. And that'll work on that. So next I want to go to my keys over here. Okay, and we're going to take the keys and basically do the same thing. We want to create a new stereo aux input and call this one lowercase b keys spells keys bus. Okay, we're going to set an input up for this guy using bus 3 and 4 since 1 and 2 is already busy. We're going to rename that. We're going to solo save that. Then we're going to shift click on keys left and right to select both. Option shift do to selected. Output both of those into the keys bus. And now our keys are being fed into our bus here. So when we solo the keys, then we can hear it through the solo safe bus and realize that even though we have the drum bus solo saved, you don't hear anything coming through that right now because as these are soloed, all the original raw tracks of the drums also get muted so nothing passes through that drum bus. So right now, we have the ability to just listen to the keys when we hit solo. So we want to do an EQ on our keys to try to make them sound a little bit more like an actual piano um, and not so much a digital DI sounding. So I kind of like, let's do the filter bank, um, the E606. And one thing I like to do, particularly on direct input tracks, DI'd tracks, is set up a high pass filter somewhere at least around 35, 40 uh, hertz or so. I think we can do a sharper slope than that. Um, but essentially, anything that was plugged directly in has very unfiltered um, low end a lot of the time. So I want to kind of get a little bit of a handle on that and. I want to beef up, solo this guy here, beef up some of this low end a bit more. We can make that a little more of a peak, maybe a little less of a slope. Get a little bit more rich low end and tuck out some of these mids and Try to brighten it up a little bit without making it sound like a honky-tonk piano. That'll work for now. We'll come back to it later as we listen to it with the rest of the tracks in here. Okay, next we're going to do some effects. So that's going to mean uh, parallel buses and not this serial processing type of bus. So first thing I want to do here is throw a plate verb on the snare. Snare's a little bit tight sounding and we want to give it a little bit of length, a little bit of depth, make it go a little bit longer in the mix, if you will. So we're going to create a new stereo aux input. Create that. And we're going to name this track Snare Verb. We could call it Snare Plate if we planned on using several different snares at the same time or something like that. Okay, now we're going to need an input from an unused bus. That will be bus 5 and 6. I'm going to rename this Snare Verb. Okay, and we're going to solo safe our Snare Verb. And this is now set to output. And now we're going to choose a revolver plugin. And in revolver, let's find a plate. Um, I think the EMT 140 is pretty good. We're going to need to set up a send. Let's kick over to our mix window. And on our sends, we can create a send that goes to a bus called snare verb. We're going to want this to just be at unity gain. So option or alt clicking will get us to unity gain just fine. 
we don't need this in pre-fade mode. In fact, we don't want that to happen. And I have no intention of panning the snare, but if I did, I would have this FMP set. So this way, if I pan the snare to the left in the mix, the wet signal in the reverb bus is going to follow where I pan it. Now this particular track, I'm going to leave the snare dead center. So this isn't going to do me any good. Okay, let's take a listen to our snare. That's going on a little bit too long. I'm going to bring that RT60 down to around two seconds and try it again. That's okay. We'll get back to that next. We are going to do a delay on the vocal. And we don't want necessarily an echo. Um, we just want to have something that can give us a little bit of length, width, and space happening on our vocal track here. So with our vocal selected, we'll create a new stereo aux input. And this is going to be called box delay. Okay, now we need an input for our box delay. Let's use bus seven and eight. We're going to rename that box delay. And we are going to solo safe our box delay. And we are going to need an insert on our delay. So let's use the McDSP. EC 300. This is pretty, pretty neat. So um, let's get a send happening on our vocal into the delay. We can close some of these extra windows. Okay, so we're going to send into our Vox delay a unity gain. Again, not pre-fade and again, lead vocal. I'm not going to be panning it, so I won't worry about follow main pan. So now... What is doing to me ain't That's pretty echoey. If we look here, we have a 250 millisecond delay time. Okay, so first thing I want to do is get that down lower. Um, and that's maybe a bit too short. Address. What is doing to me ain't a secret. Cause watching you is all that I So right around that 60 second mark you'll start to hear the separation. Address. What is doing to me ain't a secret. Okay, another thing is what you're gonna notice, um, the mix is 50-50 wet dry. So we wanna make that a hundred percent since this fader now is our wet dry mix. Address. There's dry. What is doing to me ain't a secret. Cause watching you is all that I can do. And there's our delay and signal. I so I'd recommend playing with um, the settings on this delay. We have three different types. This is kind of that tape style delay, then a digital delay, and then an analog delay. Each delay type has different characters. Okay, so as you play through these different types of um, tape, for example, the warm tape with some saturation raised on it. Okay, there's also EQ filters here for high pass and low pass. Address, what is doing to me ain't a secret. Cause watching you is all that I can do And I'm speechless You already know that you're my weakness After all this time I'm just as nervous Every time I dress What is doing to me ain't a secret There you go. So the more you play with getting it to blend into the mix, you don't necessarily want a big in-your-face type of effect happening here. Just want to add a little bit of weight, a little bit of space and time for that vocal to kind of settle in. But I 
thoroughly recommend playing through the different settings, figuring out some of these, um, the effects, tweaking the knobs and actually playing through things a little bit. You also, for more echoey type of feel or more stereo spread, you have a dual and a ping pong delay setting that creates different settings for your left and right speakers that really get um, a, a more wide and interesting type of uh, effect happening from that guy. But that's good enough for now, so it's time for some parallel compression on the snare. Yes, what we want to do is essentially use some compression like an effect. So what we're going to do is finally, since this is the last track we're going to make here today, I'm going to show you guys the shortcut. So what we're going to do is start with our snare and click on our send. And instead of going through the whole process of creating the aux input, naming it, creating a bus, naming that, setting up a send, outputting that, we're just going to create a send directly to a new track. Okay, Pro Tools immediately pulls up the new track dialog box with our stereo aux input chosen. We just want a mono because we're essentially duplicating the snare for some parallel compression. So a mono aux input that we're going to name forward slash forward slash SN, that spells parallel snare. Two parallel lines followed by SN is the abbreviation for snare is an abbreviated way to just say parallel snare very easily and quickly. So now... You can see we've got our send created, we've got our aux input created, we've got the bus created, everything is already named and ready to go. All we need to do is option click. We're gonna set this to pre-fade, okay? And just in case, we'll set it to follow main pan just so we can do that sort of thing if we want. But most likely I'll be leaving this up the center. Now, all that's left is to compress this guy. We're not gonna solo safe this track because it's a pre-fade send. I'll show you right now. If we go in here and throw a, let's say 60-30 ultimate, why not? Let's do it. That gives us a lot of options for character and time to play. What we're gonna be looking for here is some of the intricate detail um, of the snare that's kind of missing when we play through the mix. Let's hear it real fast. Okay, so we can hear the snare. Let's hear it soloed. So what you should be listening for right now is what's happening in between the big snare hits. Listen to, we have our pop. Okay, so for now I'm also gonna mute our snare verb. And since we have a pre-fade send into our parallel bus, we can just solo the parallel all by itself. And even though the snare gets muted by soloing this track from a pre-fade send, we're still good to go. So what we wanna do now basically is super squash. Try some different time settings. We want something with a nice attack, but if you hear all those grace notes happening, we're gonna wanna really listen through those. So slow attack, fast-ish. That's really not getting the compression that I want. Let's try this guy on Crush for tons of crush. Oh yeah, listen to that. So let's hear it in the mix. So there's our snare by itself without the parallel. Okay, then we want to play with the mix levels.
There you go. So that gives us a starting point. We're going to play with this for a while and get that happening. Um, and we have now our parallel and serial buses set up, and we are ready to mix.